Workers, welcome back to another episode of the Alberta Worker. We are broadcasting from the territory of the Nitsasabi. You are tuning in to Season 1, Episode 10. We are a proud member of the Labour Radio Podcast Network. I'm really excited to announce today's guest. That's Ashlyn Chand, who is a freelance journalist. Welcome, Ashlyn, to the podcast. Hey, Kim. Thank you for having me. Uh, so let's just get straight into it. How about you tell us your life story? So basically, you know, where were you born, where you grew up, what your family life was like, uh, where you went to school, and that sort of thing. And then as you're telling us that, just try to incorporate, you know, your personal labor history, your first job, your subsequent jobs, what you're doing now, and that sort of thing. Thing. Yeah, so I was born and raised in Edmonton. I still live there in the north side. I've grown up there my entire life. So both of my parents both immigrated from Fiji in like the 90s. And I didn't really work until university. Like I was always around like working class people and like, you know, around workplaces often because my mom used to work at Arby's as like a cash- uh, cashier or like a manager and I would always uh, I don't know if I should say that but like I would always be in like the back when I was younger or like something like that or like you know my dad was an electrical draftsman and my mom would sometimes needed to take us to work and would just be in the back of like RVs for like eight hours while she was working so that's kind of like my background is that I'm a little bit working class but I was I guess like in my mind like back then I feel like I was more like upper middle class or middle class because of my dad's background and so it's just like this weird like jarring kind of situation where you're like going from your mom's work to your dad's work and it's like two different class backgrounds almost because like you would meet your dad's like bosses and all that you would go to like these engineering parties or like be like with these like really rich like kids and all that and they're like oh yeah, I bought like this new MacBook, but I don't like it. It's in the wrong color or something like that. (laughs) Like, oh, I don't have a MacBook. I have like an HP and they're like, it's so cheap. And I'm like, yeah, it's just, you know, like it's weird to like alternate sometimes. Cause like in the North side as well of Edmonton, it's more like also working class or like more, um, most of my friends, their parents were like truck drivers or construction workers stuff like that teachers and then you'd go to like the south side or something like that for these like parties and you have to like they'll show like their big houses and all that and you're like oh it's so cute and all that I wasn't actually like allowed to work when I was in high school and this would always like cause like a little bit of tension with like my other friends because they would have to work like at Sobeys or like Superstore to help their families and all that but I wasn't allowed to like it doesn't matter how much like my parents were struggling or something like that I was just expected to study and focus on studying and try to like reach this kind of like upper class kind of career or something like that since like the fusion community is like so small too not everybody really gets a chance to like always go to school or have these intense education backgrounds or anything like that like most of like especially if you're like a woman in like a Fijian like a Hindu Fijian community It's really a privilege to be able to go to school and to be educated, especially since like not everybody gets that opportunity. And so I was like really nerdy, very focused on school, but I could never like work somewhere because they're like, no, you need to focus on school and do all these things first, which compared to like like my cousins, even they work during like high school and like fast food or like all these like typical jobs being like a cashier or in retail and such. I even remember like one of our like family friends her son is like in engineering or something like that but her daughter was working at like Burger King and I was like oh why don't you send her to school or something and she's like no she's just not smart girls aren't like made for that or something like that and she's like I was like that's so horrible so I always felt like intense pressure to kind of like reach these like very privileged jobs or whatever so I focused on going to university and getting that education Cause I was like kind of expected to be a little bit more, I guess, perfect or like didn't want to like make any mistakes or make things, make my family look bad or anything like that. I kind of ended up developing an eating disorder in high school too. Uh, when I went to university, my mental health issues became more severe. I guess like my anxiety, depression started becoming a thing. And then my second year was when I was like diagnosed with um, severe obsessive compulsive disorder. And so that really, like, shook me up uh, really badly. 
because I also couldn't really do the one thing that I was supposed to be good at, which was school. And then at the same time, I couldn't really work now either before I wasn't allowed to because my dad was also very strict about everything. But now that I'm in university, I can work, but I don't have the ability to work almost. Right. Uh, because OCD just took so much of my time sometimes and then like eating disorder. So I had to kind of like recover for a bit. I was still like in school, but I was like taking less classes, maybe not doing as much and then uh, going to doctor's appointments and all that. So my first job didn't come until I was in my fifth year of university, actually. And it was, yeah, it took a while. Uh, It took me like, I went to therapy for like two three years almost uh while going to school and dealing with it and i still have ocd it's not like gone or anything and i still have these issues it's just that better managed so my first job wasn't until i was in my fifth year and i worked as an arts and culture editor for our student paper the gateway Um, and so that was like my first experience in like a working environment but also like being a student journalist is a very public job I guess and it's also a lot of like responsibility in my opinion it's a lot of work for something that's like your first job you're kind of in charge of like a lot more especially Um, while you're going to school yeah and I mean the gateway wasn't like the greatest place to work either there was a lot of issues um there and everything it was it was so so messy uh but it was I also met like some great people there and I like really value their friendship and everything but it's so interesting to kind of like look back at as well and it's also like really hard to find a job too that really that was flexible enough and could actually be done by someone with OCD or like someone who was dealing with like mental health issues and especially you don't have any prior experience most workplaces require prior experience even if you work in like a restaurant or something uh and it's just weird for like a 21 year old have no prior experience anywhere and so I couldn't even get hired anywhere else I applied to the gateway on like a whim my friend I was volunteering somewhere to try and like build up my resume and so I was like hey you should just apply for this job why not and I was like sure it's uh I probably won't get it but I'll try and so I was kind of shocked that I did get it at first but yeah but that's kind of like what led me down this journalism path almost accidentally it wasn't like intentional in any way i was like oh i just really like art and writing so i might as well well while i was working at, at my student paper the pandemic hit as well that was like at the end of like my fifth year and so i did actually end up extending my degree by like one semester or something because i couldn't finish it it was just too much work and then yeah. the pandemic just really online schooling was just a mess at the U of A to be quite honest but it was just I couldn't focus and I had to like finish my job first afterwards it was still hard to find like a job anywhere it was hard to even like really do anything about that because there's just not a lot of options in Alberta for like young graduates to be quite honest so I was like oh let me try freelancing or like just getting some money so that maybe I could do like a master's or something yeah so I was freelancing and then I wrote this article for Ricochet on migrant workers and housing and then after a couple of weeks or like a couple of months I pitched something else to Ricochet again and they said no but then they were like we actually have this opportunity that you might not want but you do you want to hear about it and I was like sure and they're like do you want to go into Amazon and work as like a warehouse associate and and write an article about it. And I was like, hell yeah, sure. It'll be fun. And then it was so funny because Ethan, um, the editor at Ricochet, he was like, it's not going to be a fun job, you know? Like, you don't, it's it's Amazon. It's going to be very hard. <laughs> and I was like, no, it's going to be fun. Like, it's going to be great. Because I was like, I have nothing else to do. And I was like, sure. And so I worked at Amazon from, I think it was like June to like almost... October or like end of October or something like that. I mean, it wasn't great. It was, it just taught me a lot more about labor and like working and everything. It was just so interesting because I would just never imagine working at Amazon ever. Like I would never like go out of my way to apply to work at Amazon. The work is really hard. Like your back hurts so much. Your feet yeah. hurt so much. You're so tired all the time. But the people there are great. Like I loved working with them. I 
I think they're so sweet. They're so funny. And a lot of them are also like immigrant women or like other like first gens. It's such intense work too. Like sometimes like people are packing like uh, the fastest packer could pack like 300 boxes per hour. Oh my and, goodness. Yeah. And they could do that for like 10 hours straight sometimes. And I'm like, there's no way. That is obscene. I was so Holy. blown away by like their skill level too. And it was so weird because they're like talking to me and they're like, oh, you don't belong here at Amazon. You are educated. You have a degree. You need to go work like for the government or something like that. You, you don't belong here. You have too many skills. Like you have talent. And I'm like, I don't understand like why you guys don't think you have talent. Like this is insane. Hey. I was struggling so much at the beginning too. Like I know one of the workers, she told me, she's like, you know what? I actually told our operations manager, who's like the boss to our boss, that like, you aren't going to make it. Like you're just too slow. Or something. <laughs> and I was like, wow, really? And she's like, yeah, I just thought you would not pa make it past like two weeks. You would be here for two weeks and then just leave. And I was like, wow, no. And it's like, so interesting to see like everything that happens at amazon too and like there's so many like little inside things too you just know ship dock is like horrible but you can't really explain to people like why working at ship dock is horrible but they're like oh yeah people quit there like after two days like these really strong men would come in work there for two days and they would quit because of how intense those jobs are but it's also like this weird inside thing that only amazon workers really understand how like working at Amazon is like as well. Like it sounds simple enough. Like you're like, oh, I can pack boxes. I have a university degree or something like that. And then you work there and you're like, oh my God, my degree is absolutely useless. Like I <laughs> even like imagine thinking, it's, it's just so strange. Like even my area manager at Amazon, he was a recent grad just like me. He like has to do a lot of the data stuff and all that. But I'm, he's like, I can't do that. I can't pack these boxes like that. And I'm like, you're right. It's so weird how much we like privilege like education, university. And then you realize that like your degree could absolutely just not be useful in the real world. And yet we undervalue so many workers because they have these practical skills um, that just in our minds are like low skill. And I'm like, there's no way this is like low skill. I have like a, a huge appreciation for these workers. We call workers like that unskilled workers. It makes no yeah. sense. And they talk about themselves so horribly too sometimes. They would be like, yeah, like, you know, we're not smart. I can't think. I can't do this um, kind of thing. Or like, I can't do what you do. And I'm like, this is like an intense skill that like you guys are the only ones who understand like how this facility worked. Not even our bosses understood the pace or like how things work. They were fixing so many issues in different places and they're fixing all these things. Even the area manager would sometimes be like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, uh, can you guys help me? Like, what am I supposed to be doing or something like that? And it's just, it's so strange. And we do call them unskilled workers and it's just a shame. Like it's yeah. just so strange in our culture. Yeah. To see that. Well, and then that sort of that sort of rhetoric like divides the working class too. Like we divide ourselves between skilled and unskilled workers. It's just one way for you know the the owner class to keep us divided instead of united. It's interesting because I have like um, I do know like engineers or like people who like work in these like higher class jobs, and like their jobs are difficult. Don't get me wrong, but it's so weird how like they talk about themselves as worthy and important and everything like that. But workers who are on like the bottom or like lower class workers, they do talk about themselves really horribly, like really like, oh, I'm just unskilled. I'm just, I'm just a construction worker or like, I'm just, I work as a waitress or something like that. It's also like strange to even like challenge those thoughts within yourself too. And it's, it takes a lot to unlearn certain things as well. I guess like after Amazon, I started working again as like a freelance. No, I started working as a community journalist for like a local paper uh, and then freelancing a little bit on the side. And then I learned a little bit more about community journalism and like more of this local politics aspect of it. And then now currently I am 
a labor reporting intern at Press Progress. And so it's so strange how like I kind of just went through that like little path accidentally and just ended up back at labor almost. But yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I wonder if you would have gotten that internship if you hadn't have done the Amazon job. I feel like the Amazon piece really did change my trajectory in like journalism like I actually don't think like press progress would have even noticed me they're lovely don't get me wrong like they're it's a great team but I do remember them mentioning that like they really were interested in like this Amazon piece that I work and that they really love this piece so I do think like that changed how like um what I was able to do in journalism or like what my career path could be it just like kind of opened another door I don't know, you feel a little bit guilty because you're like, you kind of use this experience that is part of so many people's like daily life that they don't really see an escape from as well. Yeah. Like so many workers there are like, oh, it's, I hate working at Amazon, but I need to do it. Cause, like they do like working at Amazon, but they're like, you know, they went to school for like different reasons, for example. Like they went to school for finance or marketing and all that. Or they want to go back to school for something, but then like cost and like bills and all that stops them or that um, their degree just isn't valued in Canada. And I'm like, I don't really know what difference it would make to be like a marketer in India and a marketer here. Like it's just a different demographic, but it's just the way we think of like the global South and workers from the global South. We consider them as less intelligent, less worthy. And that's just such a white supremacist idea. Just interesting. Like, I, I feel a little bit guilty that, like, I've had a little bit more luck than other people sometimes. But I don't know if that's just because of, like, my upbringing and that you're, like, you have to kind of consistently go and, like, repay people or, like, you're supposed to kind of, like, you're, like, one of, like, a few, essentially. Like, most people wouldn't. Have made it this far if given my circumstances or something like that great um i have a couple questions you had talked about this contrast between your dad's upper middle class job and then your mom's food services job and i was wondering what were the reasons why your mom had that job did your parents need that extra money it, did she just want oh. to be out working or so they didn't need that extra money my dad job was well paying compared to my mom but I don't know if it could sustain like a family alone I think he made around like 80 to 90 thousand a year and my mom would make maybe like 30 to 40 thousand but I also think a large part of the reason why my mom worked there was also for saving for school and like luxurious items okay. so like things like you know buying nice clothes and saving for a nice house and like stuff like that cost extra obviously but then also like she really did want us to go to university and so she was kind of planning from my young age that I would go and it's different now I would say like now compared to like people who have families and such they do kind of even if they work like one job they have to work more it's very common for people who have like kids and are like in this like working class background for them to have like two to three jobs now which like i feel like in the early 2000s it was very common for parents to just have one job even if they don't like it it was just one job you finish at the end of the day it's just so different like even when i think about like my future like, I just, I don't really see myself even being able to get married and have kids and then have a house and all these things because there's just, the costs have changed so much. Like, it just has inflated so much and now there's so many other issues and there's really, like, no way for us to do that. Honestly, the only way that someone can live on one income is if, like, they have a, a really, really well-paying job, like they're a doctor or a lawyer or something like that, but can't all be doctors i mean there are lots of other positions that have to be filled yeah and like medical school and law school takes extra money like you can't even like apply for these schools without having a huge chunk of money and then also like when i was in university our financial background did change 
So I did go from like a bit more of like a middle class background to more of a lower class background uh, because my dad ended up losing his job. Oh, and okay. We ended up actually losing our house too. Oh, wow. Because they got caught up in like a pyramid scheme. Oh, no. And so it like, because they bought like this business and then it just took too much out of them. And they ended up taking like a second mortgage on the house. And then we ended up losing oh, that. Oh, no. And then um, during the pandemic, we also ended up losing the place that we were in originally as well because the landlord wanted to sell that place for money she kicked us out and so now we're in this place which is still really expensive but not great there's like yeah and like mold and like oh keeps like telling me that the roof is gonna like fall i'm like there's like really no other option but yeah yeah what's your dad doing now he's back at work as an electrical draftsman part-time but Uh, for like a couple of years he wasn't working and like the way he lost his job originally was he needed surgery and then was laid off what yeah so while he was recovering from his surgery he was laid off and i was like oh my goodness and so now my mom also works extra and she also ended up losing her savings like the savings that we were supposed to have for our education Yeah. yeah We did take out loans, so we were like okay, but it was just like still, yeah, it sucks. yeah. But it's like it's so different too. Like whenever I talk to people who are also like lower class or working class, they've been poor, like they're used to it, like or like they've been this at this level all their lives. But I wasn't. It was just such a drastic change, and then you right. notice so much of the disparity. But you also like notice how like wealth was this kind of protective factor for so many things. Yeah. Because they still have OCD and all that medical care and like mental health care is really expensive. Like this is not something that I would have worried about when I was in high school. But now that I'm here working, I'm like, oh, this is something that I have to like kind of budget every day or like every month. Did your dad have a benefit plan? So when my dad was working as an electrical draftsman, yeah, we used his insurance. And right. Everything. Yeah. Uh, but then you lost that when you lost his job. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like in my first year of university too. So I guess like right. that also impacted my health in some way. Canada's universal healthcare system. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird because you don't even like notice it until after it happens like how much you really how much like work impacts like your daily life too yeah like how it would impact your family or anything like that because so much of our so much of our like lifestyle was dependent on my dad's job more so than my mom's job my mom's job was always just to supplement extra to my dad yeah and then it also like leads to a lot of tension within the family and like in the house and all that kind of thing. I kind of understand that because like when my parents got together, I, I'm from a blended family. I grew up in a blended family. And when my mom and my stepdad got together, me and my mom and my sister moved into his house and he already owned his house. And after we lived there for a couple of years, well, actually about three years, they decided to sell the house and use the equity to buy a, a bigger house because there were five children now, but not just the bigger house it was a bigger house in a nice area. It's a neighborhood called the Crescents in Regina, which is really close to downtown, really nice area of tree lined old houses. You, know, you have a front veranda and everything It's a pretty nice house, but then he got laid off. And they lost their house and we lived in government housing for like the next four or five years. So yeah, it kind of sucks. So when we got together, we weren't really that well off, Um, but I guess we were well enough off to buy that house. Still didn't really feel like we were rich, but, and then when we were living in government housing, definitely didn't feel like we were rich. So yeah, I totally get it. Yeah. And then the idea that you had to, you weren't able to work while you were in high school. That's interesting that you say that because another guest that I had a few episodes ago said something similar and she grew up as a first generation Canadian as well. And her parents insisted that she focus on her studies. And so she couldn't have a job when she was in high school either. So she could prepare for university. It's very common for like a lot of first gens to kind of, to have this kind of pressure to go to school, 
even if you're not mentally or like socially ready for like university sometimes. Right. I feel like by the time I finished high school, I was burnt out. I was like really tired. I was like, I really want to break, but like my parents wouldn't allow it. And it's so weird talking to like maybe like other like white Canadians because if you say something like, oh, my parents won't allow that. <laughs> Too controlling. You know, it's like, um, but you're like an adult now. And I'm like, <laughs> no, it, it's just not how that works. Um, yeah. Even my other friends who are like Christians, even though they're not the same background, like they're not Indo-Fijian or Hindu, they still have the same pressure. Like my best friend's Lebanese and she like became an accountant and she tells me that she throws up from the stress of being an accountant sometimes. And I'm like, wow. and she's like, but I have to stay here for my mom or like, when I talk to my other best friend, she's Somali, she works as a nurse. She would like tell me, and she's working as a nurse during the pandemic too. And she's Ugh. telling me stuff like, oh, I just cried in like the back room because of how horrible this job is. Or how oh my goodness. It. There's really like nothing to really like prepare you for something like that too. Like, you can't really, like, say, like, hey, like, we have to get these nice paying jobs to support our parents or to make them proud because we have to make sure that their sacrifice is worth it because right. that's how they frame it. It's, like, it's a sacrifice. We did all this for you. We didn't do anything for us. Yeah. And so you feel a little bit of guilt trying to choose something that maybe wasn't something that might work better for you maybe it's not being a nurse or like in these fancy jobs and i also like started out as like a science major originally i wanted to become a doctor too in my second year when like my mental health got so severe and that i got severe ocd you can't really ha be a doctor and have cleanliness based ocd too and right. so it really like pushed me to think about like what i wanted and what i was willing to deal with and what I um if this is the path that I wanted to be on and I ended up actually searching to arts just on the basis of me being able to go to doctor's appointments and not have it impact schooling but I also did really like arts I did stay in it and I really do feel like my skill set works better for like the humanities and social sciences I also think like me being a journalist works well too like now I don't really think I would become a doctor. I don't think I would like it either. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a lot of pressure sometimes. I think sometimes we do falter um, from that pressure. And I also think we sometimes do fail other like women of color in the workplace sometimes, or like in general, like there's really like not a lot of support sometimes, or like, it's just, it's, you're just kind of stuck dealing with it. Like, you can't really do anything about it sometimes. And it is, like, it's such a horrible thing to think. But sometimes you're just like, it is what it is. That's just yeah. how, it, yeah. Right. So how do your parents feel about your current career path? Uh, I don't think they think I work, actually. Because <laughs> like, most of my job is working. Uh, at on the computer? <laughs> yeah. So I don't think they actually think I work or make money. But I don't make a lot of money even as, like, a freelance journalist. I sure. still, yeah. But it's, like. I mean, it's income and it could lead to other things. I know all about not making a lot of money through journalism. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it's good for now. Like, I guess like if I needed more money or something like that, I would figure it out later. I shouldn't be thinking like, oh, it's a later problem. But it is at this point, like I'm like, I, I graduated. I should just enjoy a little bit. When did you graduate? I graduated technically last June. So okay. 2021, but I finished all my schooling in September 2020, technically. No, in September 2021, something like that. So I was just kind of like in limbo waiting for my like diploma or whatever. Yeah. My degree, which I did like a Bachelor of Arts in English and Psych, which was cool. like great, but it's just. Yeah. You live at home with your parents? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you, you said you have a sister as well? I have a little sister. Uh, she's 20. She's in mechanical engineering. Uh, she's oh, a mechanical okay. student, so cool. she'll make money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she'll be the good child. Yeah, that's her job now. It's too late. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> your lost cause. <laughs> it's like weird, but it's like good. It's interesting because like I can see my sister feels like a lot of pressure too sometimes. Sure. And you feel a little bit of guilt because you're like, I was supposed to be the older sibling that's supposed to take care of you, but then she likes engineering. So it's like she likes what she does. Okay. So and I like what I do too. It's just sometimes it just is there. But yeah, I mean she got I guess like because I kind of messed up, she got to choose what she wanted to do. My parents didn't put that much pressure on her. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so. Cool. So question I always ask my other guests is how has your intersections of marginalization ever influenced your experiences as a worker? So that's how society marginalizes you. And that could be, you know, your gender, your ethnicity, your religion, orientation, ability, all the different ways that society might marginalize you. How has that influenced your experiences as a worker? I do know that like my health issues with OCD anxiety but also with like physical health issues such as like my i have like digestive issues and such impacts like my work a lot like for example when i was working at amazon i did have to take like more time off sometimes compared to other workers because i was ill or something would happen or it was just something that i would have to do and at amazon they actually do you have to kind of earn like your little time off stuff too but also you have like points so you can't miss too many days of work or else you'll get fired for oh like so like stuff like that is just like you get punished if you take care of yourself right if you have to take care of yourself you shouldn't be going to work if you're sick but you get punished by most workplaces for being sick even when i was working at the gateway because i had ocd i couldn't like just drop everything and go to work or something or like finish something like that I needed like more of this kind of like, you need to tell me a day before because I won't be able to do it at the last minute. That's just something I need, which technically is something that workplaces sh should allow for not just mentally ill people, but for like all people, you should not be doing work at the last minute. Absolutely. And, but I can never do like last minute work. And with that, it causes a lot of issues with management. So you're always kind of dealing with like issues with management because you're like, I can't do this. And it's not fair for me to do this, for example. I know with gender, a lot of times people do think I'm stupid because I am, like they do actually think I am stupid based on like how I present myself, I guess. Like my voice being higher pitched, my voice being kind of a little bit quieter or something like that compared to like someone who's a man or they just like, feel like I give off. I've been told by like people before that like I give off like a housewife vibe. You can't say that about people. There's no such thing as a person who gives up a housewife vibe. They're like, I just see you not really being a boss, but like maybe like the assistant to your husband. And I'm like, that is- <laughs> Assistant to your husband. <laughs> I was like, what? So weirdly specific, but also like, so gendered like i don't see how i couldn't work in any workplace like i could do any job really yeah I give off like a little bit of like this housewife vibe people sometimes kind of like see that as like oh you're just not as intelligent or like you just wouldn't be interested in like labor politics or economics and i'm like you can't just look at someone and be like no you just shouldn't be doing this because it's based on like what you complete is labor journalism like male centric <laughs> i think anything to do with labor is typically male centered okay like a lot of unions a lot of like labor journalism is technically in my opinion a bit more male centered or like white male centered i do know there's like a lot of great labor journalists who are women they do a lot of great work but i always feel like people kind of value the work of like white men more in general they get more opportunities they kind of are more praised more openly if you say anything about yourself that is praise most people would try to like convince you that that's not true or like oh i do work hard or i do try my best or something like that and people would be like mm, you could be working harder or something like that i know like 
when I was working on Amazon, there's a lot of racial tension. And so you would just be kind of around people. Or like, actually, I've heard this before, where people would just say openly say stuff like brown people are lazy or Indians are lazy. And oh my stuff. goodness. Yeah, just stuff like that. I know like my parents tried to buy a house like a couple years ago, and they were like told directly like, oh, we don't sell houses to Indians in Alberta, in Edmonton, of all what? things. Yeah, and I didn't know until, like, way after, like, months later, because parents don't tell you these things. Some, like, real estate person was like, we don't actually sell to Indians here. Did like, your parents say, well, we're Fijian? <laughs> right? But also, like, Fijians are, like, like I'm Indo-Fijian, so we're, like, descended right. from Indians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, kinda, like, the people trying to sell houses don't know that. <laughs> you could just take your Fijian. <laughs> make him feel stupid i would honestly say the same like i would be like i you don't know my race but like <laughs> it's weird it's such a weird thing too because you're like technically they're insulting you but they're not insulting you that's why they're telling you these things like uh, i asked someone at like amazon like oh what race do you think i am and they're like i have no clue like i can't tell at all and i'm like oh okay and then i told them like my background and all that and they're like oh interesting uh, but like you know people would just come up to you and like say like really racist stuff sometimes like anywhere and you're just kind of like do you think I would agree with that like I don't know why you would tell me this or like anything stuff like oh Asian women are just so like quiet and submissive or something like that and I'm like like why would you think I would agree with you or something like that like it's just it's so strange to kind of be around those oh. spaces you know I wonder if people think that you're like ethnically ambiguous and so because you don't fit their concept of asian they can get away with talking about asian stereotypes with you or whatever yeah i think so i think because i am like very like for some people i am very like not ethnically what they imagine for like different people that they like try and get you to kind of like buddy off or like some kind they're like oh let's be like we're gonna bond over this or something like that and you're like that's not gonna happen but it's also like strange because you feel this kind of like responsibility to kind of educate others too mm. even though it's not i know like people say that it's not your responsibility but it's like i'm not gonna let people just say these things right and not at least try and challenge their thinking or like do anything about it but it's also like weird because you're like i'm an ambassador to multiple countries almost like you're like i'm gonna need to know all about like indian politics or indian history or something like that and i'm gonna need to know like sri lankan history just on this basis of like they're gonna think i'm that race right of whatever background that they think and i'm gonna have to be able to understand like fight back like hey no this is not true this is like what ended up happening etc cetera, etc cetera. That sounds like, like a lot of extra work. It is extra work. It's a lot more like emotionally tiring too. Like yeah. physically, emotionally tiring. A lot of times in a lot of these spaces, I am also like the only person of color, which is also like a weird thing because now you're this ambassador for like all people of color in the world. Like that's too many people and everybody's so different and there's so many intricacies and everything. It's so weird because you're sure. like, I to understand like every single issue and present it in like a proper way in a way that people can understand and digest at all times like I just have to be prepared well like I don't think white Canadians really understand that like they don't understand like what that means to consistently have to kind of prepare yourself to deal with something racially motivated or to deal with microaggressions in any right. way and like you know like even like when I hear like some of the stuff that my friends have gone through like my best friend who's Lebanese, she got fired for being Lebanese. What? When we were like 16, she was working for this clothing store. And this person comes up to her. I guess they thought she was white or something like that. And they told her to her face like, oh, it's my duty to get rid of all Lebanese people from this work or like from this place. She didn't know what to do. She was like 16. Whoa. And two days later, she was fired. Uh, I guess she like the manager or something found out she was Lebanese. I was like, that's insane. Like, that's something that happens. Oh my goodness. So and so many people I know that, like, it happens to. Like, they'll be in work or something and they'll just hear something like that. Or you don't really know sometimes if it is, like, 
racially motivated or if it's just maybe you're just bad at your job you don't really know you just feel like you're kind of like guessing sometimes yeah like there's no way we could even prove that she was fired for that reason uh because like essentially she had no proof like she can't prove that that person said that but she, i know i believe her she's I wouldn't believe, I would believe my best friend, obviously, but yeah, stuff like that. Also in high school, uh, two of my friends, one was uh, Chinese and the other was Eritrean. They both applied for a job at like Brining Melville and they were very qualified for that position or whatever, but they didn't get hired and they're like, oh, well, whatever. But then whenever you go into Brining Melville, they only hire like young white girls. And so like a lot of times, like my friends they would be like oh well it feels like they didn't hire us because of our race but we can't prove that but then now they're just kind of left with this anxiety i guess yeah even when i was working at the gateway sometimes you felt like you were like a diversity hire even though like most of the people that work there when i was working there were other women of color and i'm like i don't know if like you guys if i'm actually good at this job or if i'm just here because i'm like fit of diversity quota and then like my boss would always be like no 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 like we chose you because we thought you were like good for this job but then you're always kind of like keeping this anxiety in like the back of your head or something like that like am i actually like good at this or is this just like people are pretending i don't know yeah it probably doesn't help whenever you're in a meeting and all the white people turn to you what do you think ashlyn (laughs) it hasn't happened in that way (laughs) Like, yeah, it would be kind of weird because it's like, hmm, this is like a race thing. So I guess when you <laughs> feel compelled to kind of speak out more on like racial racial issues because it's like the one thing you know almost. It's like, do I actually know anything that's important? But like, I guess is it race issues are important. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It is like a lot of work to understand that. But then you're like, do I not know anything else? Like, do I have acting skills or am I just here because I'm the face of diversity or something? Or like on university campuses or something like that. You're in all their publications and their cover photos. You know, like on their little brochures or something. Yeah. Like <laughs> on their international programs page. <laughs> basically (laughs) all right great uh any final thoughts for our listeners yeah i don't really have any final thoughts that's cool where can people follow you and your work if they're interested in in learning more like you have socials or maybe a sub stack or podcast or newsletter or anything like that um you can follow me on twitter at ashlyn a-s-h-l-y-n-n ash c all lowercase if you guys want to see my work or like keep up because usually that's where i would tweet any new articles i have you can also just google me and i would show up which is also weird anyway sure well i'll make sure to put that in the episode description i'll also include a link to that ricochet article about amazon too i think we'd be interested in, in learning more about that cool great well if um, people are interested in following the alberta worker you can find us on social media facebook twitter and linkedin you can also visit our website at albertaworker.ca where you can sign up to get our email newsletter we have daily weekly and monthly issues. If you like this podcast, you can rate and review it. You can also support the Alberta Worker by going to albertaworker.ca slash support. If you're interested in being a guest on the Alberta Worker, you can email us at podcast at albertaworker.ca. Once again, thanks Ashlyn for joining us today. Thank you also to all of our listeners. And as always, solidarity. Solidarity.